Joe, as Matt just had up in there on the chart, chart uh, gold, but then also treasuries, there's often the conversation about which is a better inflation hedge. People right now have been talking about gold. Why? Right. Well, it, the inflation talk has been back on the table. We uh, just had uh, actually one of the top uh, pr precious metals forecasters that Bloomberg rates uh, come out and tell us in an interview that uh, they were expecting uh, inflation hedge to be on the table for gold because you're, they're expecting for oil prices to rise, which will, of course, cause uh, consumer prices to rise along with it. Um, they couple that also with the central bank easing that you're seeing pretty much everywhere except for the United States. And all of those uh, combined to, at least for them, give this, uh, this outlook for using gold as a hedge against possible inflation. So uh, gold going up, at least in their mind, uh, here in the next few months or at least the near term. So, so even though we've sort of seen a very, we're kind of waiting, waiting, when is inflation going to tick up? When are we going to see, you know, the, the whites in inflation? But yet right. it's still sort of another kind of uh, point to add to the larger case for gold. So there right. still is that fundamental kind of, uh, you know, base desire for it. Right, absolutely. So there's still plenty of people in the market who do not think that there's going to be any inflation. Of course, we're seeing that played out in the Fed uh, itself, but also with uh, traders of gold as well. Um, so it really depends on uh, what kind of bet you're making. And um, it is just another one that you really have to keep in mind. We haven't heard that much, uh, at least in many, many months or possibly in a f even a few years. Not the way we did in the huge lead up up to 2011 highs, but it's still there. There are competing calls on gold, right? Um, Goldman Sachs and Bank America are saying t to do the opposite thing to investors. What, what's this consensus in the market? Right. Well, I, I think a, a lot of the reason you're seeing Goldman and, and Bank of America on the other end of this, and, and they have been actually for a long time, uh, is uh, some of them do think that we've seen, you know, these huge gains in 2016. And so Goldman's saying what? Short the metal here and Bank of America is saying buy it. I, I, I think Go Goldman at least is saying prices will be going lower, right? Um, and and their, their bet right now is that there's probably not much more they can do there. Uh, with Bank of America on the other side of it, uh, them and many others do believe that uh, there's possible inflation hedge that's still in there. Uh, there are some who don't think that the, the the economic outlook, especially in Europe, is going to be as stable as some others might be predicting. The Brexit, even though we haven't talked that much about it, still does remain on the table. And so each and every week when we write our latest you know, weekly update on gold, we do still say, listen, there are people in the market that are worried about the economic outlook, which does play as some sort of a hedge on the gold market. Joe, there used to be only two ways to play gold, the underlying commodity and the miners. Yeah. Have ETFs completely taken over as the best and most liquid way to trade gold? I mean, most people who are in the market that we're talking to will definitely be trading the commodity themselves. but. At least when you look at the retail and and even at the big asset managers, they are very much looking at ETFs. Uh, we had a story last week that was looking at the minor ETFs, which are actually doing okay. That was a little bit different story, right? There are a lot of people who think that they've gotten their balance sheets back in order and there might be a play there. And a little bit on the other side, which maybe there is some room for gold to go. But again, it depends on which side of that trade you're on. I love that conversation because if you want to be on the miners' trade, then you have to be pretty convicted in your view for higher gold because it's obviously somewhat of a higher beta to the actual commodity. Uh, but Joe, while we got you here, let's also talk about aluminum because sure. uh, I know this is something we'll be covering. And then we also had Alcoa earnings yesterday. Uh, not so hot there. A lot of specific company issues as well in terms of their outlook and their future structure uh, from a corporate perspective. But what was the read through about the commodity? Really, the big thing. The read-throughs of the commodity was was kind of a non-factor, I think. Uh, Alcoa itself basically reported that the, the aerospace was not as good as a lot of people had expected. They actually had a forecast of something like 10% increase in 2017 uh, that they just completely took out of the report. This did not go over well with the market, and we saw the biggest sell-off uh, since 2009. Um, what, what goes from there for Alcoa? Plenty of questions in the market. Obviously, they're very leveraged to other industries, so that was something very industry focused for them. Uh, but for aluminum itself, we've seen some pretty decent gains, although we did uh, just get a report from a, uh, a, a state forecaster that was saying they're expecting for a little bit more production to come back online at the end of the year because we have seen that rise in price, and obviously those smelters in China can ramp up real quick.